hand for the Lord and raise a shout of celebration. Celebrate the King of Kings. Yes, celebrate the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords and the Ancient of Kings. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is time to praise the Lord. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for it? I listened to, to, to Bishop Muthed some time back and he was talking about the five dimensions of praising and worshiping the Lord. And he gave five of them. And he began from, five, from five, he began from five. I'm going to give you two. I don't remember the rest. I will remember later. And at number five, he talked about the hype kind of praise and worship. Where we come and the only thing that we are doing is that we are getting hyped. So what, what will happen is that at the end of the service, you will go home tired like a person when you're machine aerobics. But there is no change in your life. There is no shift in your atmosphere. Nothing will change in your life. But you will go home hyped. Hyping does not change situations. Hallelujah. And then he talks about number four. He said about the religious kind of praise and worship. Praising and worshiping God as a religion. Hallelujah. But here we are praising the Lord in truth and in in truth and in, in truth and in, can I hear somebody say truth and in spirit? Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Lord like this. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Lord. We have come to give you the glory. We have come to honor you. We have come to give you the glory. We have come to honor you. We have come to give you the
as men speak we hear you O God we have come not to celebrate anything else 
but to celebrate you, O God. We have come only to worship you. We pray that you help us to decrease that you might increase in our services and even in our lives. Lord, we give you your position, rule and reign in our lives and in the services. We are declaring this morning you are the master of this service. You are the master of our lives. You are the master of everything that is called by us. We submit to you. And we ask you to take over. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. And in the name of the Holy Ghost we pray. Amen. Everybody shout a big amen. amen. Then let us celebrate the Lord with a hand. In Jesus' name. This morning I, I, I was reading from the book of Psalm. Chapter number 64. And I read verse 1, verse 2, and verse 3. And I would request that we read those, those, those three verses. Then we have a session of prayer. Then we hear the word of God. The Bible says, Hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity. And verse 3 says, Who sharpen their tongue, like a sword and bend their bow to shoot their arrows bitter words one of the things that the psalmist is asking God to do is to hide him from the enemies and I want you to understand unless God hides you you cannot be able to escape the assault of the enemy. And I want us to pray a prayer. We are going to pray, to pray two prayers. This first one is, Oh Lord, hide me from my enemies. I know why I'm saying enemies. Because you have spiritual enemies and you also have physical enemies. And therefore, I want you to lift up your voice now. And ask the Lord, oh Lord, hide me from my enemies. Hide my family from our enemies. Hide my business from its enemies. In the name of Jesus, hide our ministry, our church from the enemy. Lift up your voice and begin to call upon the name of the Lord. Let the Lord hide your life. Let the Lord hide your family. Let the Lord hide your business. Let the Lord hide our church from all our enemies. When God hides us, the enemy cannot access us. When the Lord hides your life, the enemy cannot access you. When the Lord hides your family, the enemy cannot access your family. Lift up your voice. Ask the Lord to hide your life, to hide your family, to hide your business, to hide your church. In the mighty name of Jesus, I call upon your name this morning. Hide my life from my enemies. In the mighty name of Jesus, hide my family from the enemies. In the mighty name of Jesus, hide my marriage from the enemies, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, my Father, my God, 
the psalmist is saying in verse number 3 is that the enemy uses the tongue as a sword and I want you to understand most people are not destroyed by the sword your enemies usually don't use the sword they use the tongue and I want you this morning to nullify every evil word that have been released by your enemies over your life, over your families, and over this ministry. You will say, in the name of Jesus, I nullify every word spoken against my life. Yes. I nullify every evil word spoken against my family. I nullify every evil word spoken against our ministry. Yes. Now lift up your voice. Begin to nullify every evil word that has been spoken against your life, that has been spoken against your family, your marriages, this ministry, your businesses. In the name of Jesus, nullify those words. In the name of Jesus, I nullify every evil word. Spoken against my life, I nullify them in the name of Jesus. I nullify every power. Spoken against my family in the mighty name of Jesus. I nullify every power. Spoken against my marriage in the name of Jesus. I nullify every evil word. Spoken against this ministry in the name of Jesus. I nullify every evil word. Spoken against my business in the name of Jesus. Those words against your life will not stand. Those words 
also celebrate the Lord now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may comfortably take your seats in the presence of the Lord. I know our time is far much gone, but we had to do that. Uh, it means a lot to our lives. And uh, we, we usually don't go with our, you know, our plans. You know, the plan of God is the best. And in this church, we drop our schedule and we embrace the schedule and the plans of God. If God would say we spend the entire service praying, that's what we will do. And we want to thank God because we are not here for entertainment. We are here for transformation. And I am believing God that uh, something is happening in your life, even as you sit in this place, and even as you watch us online, the Spirit of God is moving and as I have said many times, in the spiritual realm, there is no distance. Whatever is happening here is happening wherever you are watching us from. And even as we nullify the evil words, they are nullified here, they are nullified there in Jesus' name. I want us to go to the word of God this morning. And we are going to read three maybe uh, three portions of scripture, and then we shall be able to read more as we, we continue with the teaching of today. I want to begin with the book of Genesis, chapter number 38. We will read verse 27, 28, 29, and 30. Genesis 38 from verse 27. Now it came to pass at the time for giving birth that behold twins were in her womb. And so it was when she was giving birth that 
one put out his hand, and the midwife took a scarlet thread and bowed it on his hand, saying, this one came out first. Then it happened as he drew back his hand that his brother came out unexpectedly. And she said, how did you break through this breach upon you? Therefore, his name was called Perez. Afterward, his brother came out who had the scarlet thread in his hand and, this, and his name was called Zerah. Isaiah 54, verse number 3. Isaiah 54, verse number 3. For you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make desolate cities inhabited. Number 3, we will read. Isaiah chapter number 58 and verse number 8. Isaiah 58 verse number 8. The Bible says, Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. And your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. And we ask you this morning, speak to us in a way that we will understand and transform our lives and give us breakthrough in every area of our lives. We thank you, we worship you, we honor you in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this season, I must break forth. Look at the other neighbor and tell them the same. Neighbor, this season, I must break forth. So, I am bringing a message that I've titled, I must break forth. I must break forth. So I begin by defining this word break forth. Number one, to break forth is to cross over. To cross over. Number two, it is to advance. It is to advance. Number three, it is to leap forward. To leap forward. Number four, it is to expand or to enlarge. To expand or to enlarge. And number five, and, and this is my creation, it is to do what others cannot do. It is to do what others cannot do. Now, having understood what to break forth means, then what we are saying is that in this season, we must advance. We must break through. We must do what others cannot do. We must leap forward. We must cross over. Where they said you cannot cross over, you will cross over. Where they said you cannot advance, you will advance. Where they said you cannot be able to do, you will do because you must break forth. Lift up your hand and say, this season, in the name of Jesus, I must break forth. One of the things I want you to understand is our God is a God of breakthroughs. Our God is a God of breakthroughs. So, if you are going to break forth in this
this season, one of the things that you are required to have is God on your side. Because God is the giver of every breakthrough. God is the one that advances his people. God is the one that causes people to leap forward. God is the one that makes people do the impossible. Therefore, if you are going to break forth in this season, there is one thing that is number one requirement is for God to be together with you. He is the giver of breakthrough. He is the one that pushes people forward. And one of the things that I've realized in the short time I've been in the ministry is that for believers to move forward, you must be helped by God. Because there is no progress for a believer that does not have resistance. Every time as a believer, you want to move forward, you want to break forth, you want to advance, you will meet with resistance. And the only one that can break that resistance, it is God himself. And I am declaring to you today that as you walk with God, he will break every resistance concerning your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I know you have been resisted by people. I know you have been resisted by the enemies, by the spiritual powers, but I declare we have a God in heaven that is able to break every resistance. You must break forth this season in Jesus' name. Lift up your hand again and say, I must break forth in this season. You know, there are many people who the enemy has stagnated in life. You look at them. Where they were in January is where they are now. They have not been able to advance. They have not been able to leap forward. But I want to declare that your season of the advancing begins today in the name of Jesus. The season of your family moving forward. I declare by the word of God. The season begins today. Your businesses must advance. Your families must advance. Your marriages must advance. Your ministry must advance. Whatever you do must move forward. That is what we came to say. Because we have God, the giver of advance, the giver of progress, the one that gives people breakthrough. Why am I confident? Because we have God on our side. No devil can stop our moving forward. No devil can stop our rising. No devil can stop our shining. I declare by the word of God, your life will begin to shine in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your right will break forth. Your right will break forth. Where you are not seen, you will be seen. Where you are not recognized, you will be recognized. Where you are rejected, you will be accepted. Why? You are light is about to begin to shine. God is the giver of every breakthrough. God is the advancer of every believer. And I want you, if you are a believer, I want you to believe together with me today that you are advancing, you are leaping forward, begins now. Faith is now, not tomorrow. Faith is is now. We begin to move forward now. We begin to rise now. We begin to become better now. We begin to shine now. We begin to progress now. When we say that, it may not appear like that in the physical, but what we are speaking is in the spiritual because the spiritual controls the physical. As we advance in the spiritual, we automatically begin to advance even on the physical. The spiritual will command the physical. That is why the Bible says, let the poor say I am rich. Let the weak say, I am strong. Why? We are declaring it in the spirit. 
and the spirit will cause it to happen in the physical realm. I know you are down, but I cannot say you are down. I am saying you are lifted. Look at your neighbor and say, you are lifted. You are lifted. There are people who came down, came here, feeling as if they, were, they are coming to their end. I came to tell you, your beginning is now. Your lifting is now. Your shining is now. Your prosperity is now. Your wealth is now. You are not defined by the physical. You are defined by the spiritual. Yes. yes. Let me, I, I want you to understand life is more spiritual than physical. Amen. Before you see anything happen here, it already happened there. So that is why if I call you a millionaire, I have not lied. Look at your name and say, millionaire. Nuona ona gima kira na mare na na magi tiga gira to matire tekiya dira kura tere. It must happen first in the spiritual before it can happen in the physical. I am saying you have broken forth in the spiritual, and therefore automatically it will manifest in the physical. It is not what you see; it is what has happened. In the spiritual realm. You are a winner. You are a conqueror. Even with your fear, you are still a winner. You are talking about how much I got past that. I am not talking about, I am talking, you are already a winner in the spiritual realm. You know, some of us, I'm waiting to do all your tori, to your agia, near to a common yakero hoin or hoine, neguikete, to ke hori agoko, or not a kedo gadiata in Nakio, to the new end, it is only within a short time that the spiritual will manifest in the physical. Therefore, that is why I'm saying this is our season. Of breaking forth. My season of breaking forth. I declare after this service. You shall experience breakthrough. In every area of your life. You shall experience advancement. In every area of your life. I say you shall advance. I know why I'm, I'm repeating this. You might think. That I am just, but I know why I'm saying. I'm establishing it in the spiritual realm. I am saying after this service, you will advance. After this service, you will leap forward. After this service, you will do the impossible. After this service, you will shine. After this service, you will rise in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hand and say, after this service, I must break forth. You will cross over where you could not cross before. I declare you will cross over. What others could, cannot do, you will do it by the help of God. God is the giver of breakthrough. And he is about to give somebody breakthrough. You will break forth. Now look at your neighbor and say, in the, I tell them, in the name of Jesus, in this season, you must break forth. So, what are the keys that will help you to break forth in this season? What are the keys that will help you to break forth in this season? I, I am giving you very common keys, but I will explain them to you in a very special way. Because it is very important for us to understand what we must do in order to break forth. So number one key that will help you to break forth is the key of prayer. The key of 
prayer. And I want us to read from the book of Luke chapter 18 and verse number 1. Where Jesus was talking to his disciples. He said, then he spoke a parable to them. That men always ought to pray and not to lose heart. So Jesus is telling the disciples that men always ought to pray. There should be a continuous prayer for every believer. That is what Jesus is saying. So in other words, prayer is a basic necessity for success in life. I'll say that again. Prayer is a basic necessity for success in life. I'll say it at that time. Prayer is a basic necessity for success in life. Somebody said that a prayerless believer is a powerless believer. What gives you power is prayer. When you become a prayerful man, then you become a powerful man. When you become a prayerful man, then you become a successful man. Why? Because prayer is a necessity if you are going to succeed in this life. And I am praying for all of us that God will grant us grace to be able to pray that we may be able to break forth in this season. One of the things I've, I've, I've come to learn is that the grace of God works well in the environment of prayer. The grace of God works better in the environment of prayer. When the grace meets with prayer, then breakthrough, success becomes your portion. When the grace of God finds you praying, or when the grace of God corrides with your prayer, then you begin to break forth. And I pray for you that God will help you to pray always, to have the grace for prayer. Because this is one of the things that will cause you to have a breakthrough. That will cause you to break forth. One of the things you must understand that prayer is a catalyst for breaking forth. If you are going to break forth, you will require prayer so that that prayer can give birth, can help you to birth a breakthrough, can help you to break forth. And I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice, you shall receive the grace for prayer. Because this is where the devil has messed many believers. They come to church. They can sing. They can jump up and down. But when it comes to prayer, they don't pray. I was reading an article whereby they said that the average prayer time for a believer, a research was done, every day is five minutes. Believers, I am not talking about Non-believers, I am talking about believers. One of the things that we must raise the bar is prayer. Because there are people who will only pray when they come to church. But they have no set time for prayer at home. But I want you to know if you must break forth one of the keys that will help you to break forth is the key of prayer. That after you are prayed, you pray again. I was reading from the book of First Kings, I believe it was chapter 18 and verse number 42, where Elijah was praying. So, so Ahab went up to eat and drink, and, and Elijah went up to the top of to the top of Camel, then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees. It is the prayer of Elijah that caused him to break forth and there was rain after three and a half years. The breakthrough came through prayer, not through coming to church. Coming to church is good, but there are 
breakthroughs you only get through prayer. There was a famine three and a half years. What gave Elijah the breakthrough is the key of prayer. Is there a famine in your life? Is there a famine in your family? Is there a famine on, of, of any type in your life? You can break forth by the key of prayer. If you can pray, there is a God that can hear prayer. There is a God in heaven that can hear prayer. That is why I advocate prayer. You know, prayer must be like food for you. The way you eat in the morning, the way you eat at, you know, there are people who, we, who, eat, who eat about five times every day. They have breakfast. They have snacks at 10. They have lunch. They have another snack at 3.30. And they have dinner. They are eating five times, but they are praying for five minutes. So we must, we must put a menu, a prayer menu. Like the way you have a menu for eating. You put morning, I have to pray for half an hour. At 10, at break, I must pray 15 minutes. At lunch, I must pray for half an hour. In the evening, I must pray for another one hour. Amen. A prayerless believer is a powerless believer. Look at your neighbor and say, now look at your life. Yes. You know, because the way you are is because of the level of your prayer. If you must break forth, if you must bring an end to every famine in your life, then you must break it through prayer. One of the things that prayer does, it gives you direction. As you pray, you get direction. As you pray, you get courage. As you pray, it prepares you for the future. There is a great future for you. Look at your name and say, your future is great. The way to prepare for that great future is through prayer. You shape your future with prayer. You break forth into your future with prayer. You break forth in prosperity in prayer. You break forth into victory with prayer. You must become a man and a woman of prayer if you must break forth. I know people don't want this, but we will hammer it until it enters your spirit. We will tell you to pray. And after we have said pray, we will say pray again. Why? Because your prayer is what subdues every enemy. Your prayer is what subdues every limitation. Your prayer is what breaks forth in every area of your life. Brings breakthrough in every area of your life. May God grant you grace for prayer. Lift up your hand and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Grant me grace for prayer. You know, we, we, there, is a man of, there is a man we talk about the name by the name of Jabez. And it was through prayer that Jabez broke forth into blessings, into enlargement, into advancement. Just through prayer. This man was stagnant. What helped him to break forth? What helped him to receive the blessing, to receive the advancement, to be enlarged was the power of prayer. The key of prayer, it gave him a breakthrough in life. If you can pray, you can break forth. If you can pray, you can break through. If you can pray, you can advance. If you can pray, you can do the impossible. If you can pray, you can rise higher. And this is what we want in this church. We want people who will smell prayer. Amen. That when you, when, you, when you meet with them, they smell prayer. 
they have prayed, they have become prayer themselves. You know, there are times when we got born again in 19, where I got born again in 1987. And I tell you, those days we could pray because we fear nobody. And, and I remember I told you one time I entered into a matatu in town. I was going all the way to a place, I don't know, Gatokoyo. After I don't know Gatodo or Zika, I don't know, I don't remember very well. But when I entered the matatu, I started praying. I stopped when the matatu stopped. And I was not praying silently. I was praying in tongues for, what, for 45 minutes until we arrived. I know it was prayer without wisdom, but it was prayer. You know, it was the zeal I had, but it was a zeal without wisdom. But what am I saying? We must have the zeal of prayer. Zeal of prayer. When, whenever you find time, you know, I read about this man of God that went to be with the Lord the other day, the, the, the man from South Korea. What was his name? Young Isho. And, and I heard him, he had written in his book that he went to pray golf. Every time he is praying golf, he prays for one hour and then he stops praying golf. He hides besides the trees and prays for half an hour. Then he goes back to pray golf. One hour, he goes back to prayer. This is an addicted man. We must be addicted in prayer. Every moment that you get, you are praying in the name of Jesus. When you are in the bathroom, you are praying. Everywhere you find yourself, you are in the mood of prayer. Because it is the key of prayer that will help you to break forth. Receive grace for prayer. Receive grace for prayer. Receive grace for prayer. I know that is not so sweet to some years, but this is what you need. You know how you're going to break forth? Through prayer. Through prayer. Through prayer. Through prayer. Number two key that will help you to break forth is the key of obedience. Let me say this. Every instruction from God that you obey is designed to move you forward. I will say that again. Every instruction from God when you obey it, then it moves you forward. There is no instruction that God gives to a man to bring him down. Every kind of instruction, it is to move you forward. It is to raise you. Now, I, I, when I was, I, I was preaching on Thursday, I gave you the scripture in the book of Joshua, chapter number 6, from verse 1 all the way to verse number 20. This is where God tells, commands Joshua on what to do in order for the wall to come down. And the walls to come down, it required obedience. God gave them instructions on what to do. And he said the first day, walk around the city once. And he gave them the instructions all the way to the seventh day. And I want you to understand, they were instructions. They were no suggestions. And when they obeyed the instructions, then the impossible took place. Let me say to you, for your mountains to come down, you will require to obey the voice of God. The instruction that God has given. The reason the walls came down, it is because of their obedience. They did what they 
were instructed and they got a breakthrough. I want you to understand your obedience is the mother of breakthrough. Your obedience is what will help you to break forth. You know, some, some, some instructions don't make sense. Like this instruction they got, it never made sense. Where in the earth did you hear that people can walk around the wall and the wall collapses? It doesn't make sense. But I came to tell you, even when the instructions from God does not make sense, obey them. Obey them. Obey them. Why? Because every instruction is designed to lift you up. Every instruction is designed to give you an upgrade. Every instruction is designed to transform your life. You know, the Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. When they obeyed the voice of God, they broke forth. The walls came tumbling down and they caught their inheritance. Their victory was totally dependent on their obedience. I'll say that again. Their victory was totally dependent on their obedience to the instructions that God had given them. I'll tell somebody here that your obedience to God is what will bring breakthrough your way. The Bible says in the book of Job, chapter number 36, verse number 11, that if they obey him, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pressures. There is power in obedience. There is breakthrough in obedience. There is breaking forth in obedience. There is success in obedience. There is prosperity in obedience. There is joy in obedience. If you can purpose to obey God, there is nothing that God cannot give it to you. There is no breakthrough that you cannot get. And that is why the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1, verse number 19, if you are willing and obedient, willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. When others are missing the good of the land, the obedient, will eat the good of the land. Now hear this. God is not talking about the economy of Kenya or of the world. Even when the economy is bad, if you are willing and obedient, he will supply. You know, God is not controlled by what is happening. You know, God is not controlled by the fuel prices. God is not controlled by the war in Ukraine. You know, when there was famine, a man that was obedient, he was fed by the ravens. When there was no meat anywhere else, there was meat at the feet of Elijah. I declare to you, as you become obedient to God, you will never miss any good thing in your life in Jesus' name. Doors will open for you in the mighty name of Jesus. What others are not achieving, you will be able to achieve. What others are not accessing, by your obedience, you will access it. Amen. Lift up your hand and say, Father, give me grace for obedience. So obedience will help you to access the good things in the kingdom. Obedience will help you to advance in life. Obedience will help you 
to leap forward in life. Obedience will help you to shine in life. You access the blessings by obedience. You access breakthrough by obedience. You access the good things from God by obedience. You do the impossible by obedience. You cross over by obedience. By obedience. I pray that God will help all of us to be obedient to every instruction that he gives us. I finish this point by saying this, that obedience is the key that opens all doors. Obedience is the key that opens all doors. Obedience is the key that opens all doors. You know, God speaking to the children of Israel in the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 28, he is telling them, if you obey my commandments, I shall, I shall set you above all other nations. That's what he say, verse 1. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. Obedience is what upgrades your life. Obedience is what takes you higher than your peers. You know, in the same chapter, when you go down, it says you shall be the head and not the tail. How are you going to be the head and not the tail? By obedience. When you obey, God makes you the head. When you obey, God puts you above. You can never be beneath. You will remain above by the reason of obedience. Lift up your hand and say, Father, give me grace to obey you. One of the things you must understand as we finish this point is that your obedience activates the power of God over your life. Your obedience activates the power of God in your life. In other words, when you obey, you tell God now, begin to work. He's saying, in this, in this, in, in this, in, the, in, in verse one, that when you obey, He will, He will begins by your obedience. He can't before you obey, but when you obey, He begins. He begins to work on your case. So your obedience is an invitation to God to handle your situation. Can I say that again? Your obedience is an invitation to God to handle your situation. So I declare by the reason of obedience, you will break forth this season. By the reason of obedience, your families will break forth in this season. By the reason of obedience, your businesses will break forth in the name of Jesus. See, lift up your hand and say, I am breaking forth. In this season, in the name of Jesus, then put your hands together and celebrate the Lord. Yes, obedience, obedience. And here we are talking of obedience to God, obedience to God. You know, Mary is, is seeing the people struggling with, with, with no wine and he says, whatever he tells you to do, do it. When they obeyed, they had a breakthrough. I tell somebody, your next breakthrough is in your obedience. If, if you are going to break through, then you must be obedient to the word of God, to the instructions that God gives you. Number three, and then we finish because our time is gone. We've already taken 15 minutes of the second service. Number three key that will help you to break forth in life is the key of faith. The key of faith. You cannot down 
Matthew chapter 21 and verse number 21. The key of faith. Please give it to us. Matthew 21, 21. Not 29, 21. He says, so Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. I said the other day, the faith is having confidence in God. When you have confidence in God that he is the God that will help you to break forth, then you will break forth. You know, and let me also say this, faith is believing the impossible. Faith is seeing the impossible. Faith is seeing the invisible. You know why the Bible says in the book of Job 22 verse number 28, the verse that we read many times, that you shall decree a thing and that thing shall be established for you that there may be right on your part. Let me say this. You why do you decree? You decree because you have faith. You have faith that you happen. That is why we decree. We believe that it is possible, that God can do it. That is why we decree. We decree that we are breaking forth. We decree that we are breaking through. We decree that we are advancing. When we have the faith of God in God, then we can break forth. There is no impossibility to a man of faith. Look at your neighbor and say, may you receive grace to have faith in God. By faith, you can move mountains. By faith, you can advance. By faith, you can rise high. By faith, you can do the impossible. By faith, you can be able to do what has been said that cannot be done. And I'm saying to you, you can break forth by the key of faith. The key of faith. The key of faith. What people said you cannot do, you begin to it. One of the things that faith does, faith helps you to speak the impossible. Faith helps you to see the invisible. That sometimes you talk and people don't understand you because they don't have faith. They don't have the kind of faith that you have. You are seeing what they are not seeing. You are hearing what they are not hearing. That is why you will hear Elijah after the key of prayer before breakfast. Breaking forth. He is telling Ahab. Now Ahab, begin your journey to Jezreel. Why? I can hear the sound of abundance of rain. He never saw rain, but he had it in the spirit. He had the faith. By faith, he had it. I pray for you that you will hear your victory before it appears. You will hear of your breakthrough before it appears. You will have an ear that have faith to hear what others are not hearing. You will have an eye to see what others are not seeing. You know, some of us, we act by faith. We move by faith. We speak by faith. Look at your neighbor. I tell them, I see you breaking forth. We must carry the spirit of faith that sees what others are not seeing, that speaks the unspeakable, that hears the unhearable, if there is anything like that. They are hearing. People who are seeing away in the wilderness because of the faith they have in God, they are saying, we will make it. We will succeed. We will rise because we have faith in God. You know, we have victory over our enemies by faith. When, whenever you have faith, you activate the hand of God to fight your battles. 
You know, the Bible says in the book of, is that Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, that, that without faith, you cannot please God. You know God, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. So you please God by faith. When God sees your faith, he begins to act. That is why he was telling the people he was healing, because of your faith, you are healed. Because of your faith, break forth. Because of your faith, go and advance. Because of your faith, go and shine. Because of your faith, let the doors open. Because of your faith, be established. Because of your faith, break forth in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hand and say, this season, I must break forth. So you access faith. By the word of God. By hearing the word of God. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So one way you access faith is by hearing the word of God. Let me tell somebody here. You must eat the word of God. You must drink the word of God. You must think the word of God. You must walk the word of God. You must act the word of God. The word, you must be full of the word. The people that are full of the word, they are full of faith. Look at your neighbor and say, start speaking the word. Tell, start acting the word. Start eating the word. You know, I, I spoke on of, 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 of Joshua chapter 1, of chapter 6 from 1 to 20. Where God gave the instruction. But when you go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11 and verse 30, it was not only obeying the instruction. Please can you go there, Hebrews 11, 30. He, hear what the Bible says. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they encycled for seven days. So it is a combination of of obedience and faith that brought down the walls of Jericho. He say, by faith the walls of Jericho came down. You know, they had faith that God will do as he has said. As they were walking around the city, as they were walking the first day, they, with obedience, they had faith that God will do what he said. Do you know why they walked? They had faith. Some of us walk in darkness because God has said and we have faith that he can be able to do it. Some of us say what we are not in the physical because we have faith that God can be able to do it. We talk like God. The Bible says that our God caused those things that are not as though they were. We also believe it. Therefore, we call the things that are not as though they are. And that is why I'm saying you will break forth. You will advance. You will leap forward. You will do the impossible. You will become better than you are today. Your family will be established. We did not come here to hype. Emotions. We came to say our God is able. He can do it. You know why this ministry will never go down? Because we have faith in God. Men may fail, but Jehovah cannot fail. God can never fail. Our faith is not in ourselves. Our faith is not in our ability. Our faith is in God. I am declaring in the name of Jesus that by the power of your faith in God you will break forth in this season. Break forth financially. Break forth in every area of your life. Whatever was difficult for you before, let it be easy in the name of Jesus. Every limitation you will break in your life 
in the name of Jesus. Where you could not cross over, I declare you shall cross over. In the mighty name of Jesus, what was impossible for you, I declare it shall be possible. What they said you cannot get, I declare you will get. Where they said you cannot go, I declare you will go. Where they said you cannot celebrate, I see you celebrating. In the name of Jesus Christ, this is your season to break for. You will advance. With no fail, you will advance. With no fail, you will cross over. With no fail, you will leap forward. With no fail, you will do what others could not do. I see you being enraged. I see you expanding on every direction. Why? Because it is your season to break forth. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, from today, you will break forth from every hopelessness, from every stagnation, from every failure, and from every poverty in Jesus' name. Now begin to break forth. Break forth in every area of your life. Where you are stagnant, break forth. Where there was poverty in your life, break forth. Where there was barrenness in your life, break forth. Where there was limitation, break forth. Where there was stagnation, break forth. In the name of Jesus, give God a mighty hand in this house. Can you go back to the scripture we started with so that we finish Isaiah chapter 58 and verse number 8 please Isaiah 58 verse 8 it says then your right shall break forth like the morning your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Lift up your hand and say, in the name of Jesus, I declare I will shine in life. I will shine in my career. I will shine in my family. I will shine in my business. I will shine in every area of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare I am unstoppable by the forces of the enemy. I must shine in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord in the name of Jesus. I declare the beginning of your season of breaking forth. Break forth. Break forth. Break forth. I know what I'm saying. Break forth. Hold what people said you cannot hold. Get what people said you cannot get. Rise to the level you have never expected. the time come when you have to introduce yourself to the people who knew you before. You know, in the second service I'll be I'll be preaching a message and one of the points that I had written is that this man Joseph God worked on him that he, everything about him changed his countenance you know let me let me ask you pastor Ben if you see your brother after 20 years will you know him your brother your brother you are you, you will know him so God worked on Joseph so much that when the brothers came to Egypt, they did not know him. He was a new man. 
them they were the same because Joseph knew him, knew them. Because where Joseph left them is where they were. But where they left Joseph is not where he was. There are people that are breaking forth here. You will need to introduce yourself to the people that look down on you. You will introduce yourself. Look at your neighbor and say, I will introduce myself. He said, I am the Joseph. The one that you sold. The one that you had put in the pit. You don't remember the one that dreamt. It is God that breaking forth that brings a transformation. That even when they look at you, they will say, Oh, you pastor, I shall pastor. pastor. Why? Because you are broken forth. And that shall be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Give God a mighty hand in the house. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 So we want to worship God with our substances now. I know we have overdone it, but it's because we spent some time in prayer before we started the service. But we thank God because we are on God's schedule. So please prepare yourself with your tithe. Prepare yourself with your offerings and with your seeds in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And even as we prepare, I would want to just to announce there will be a leaders meeting in Kiambu on the 23rd of this month. Uh, somebody called me and said I sometimes I announce, other times I don't announce. So I have taken the challenge. Uh, there will be a leaders meeting in Kiambu Word of Faith on the 23rd of this month from 9 a.m. and all are invited. Amen. Let's pray for the offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for speaking to us this morning. We thank you that this is our season to break forth. And now as we give to your kingdom, Lord, make it happen in our finances and let us break forth in every area of our finances. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. So the people who are online, you will give your offering, your tithe and your seed using the pay bill that is appearing on the screen. And for us who are here, uh, we are going to place our, worshiping to, our worship to God on the altar in Jesus' name. You are most welcome to give to God in Jesus' name. Amen. take this opportunity as you give to thank everyone that attended our revival meetings that ended on Tuesday. And one of the things that I realized is that some of you refused to come to the midweek services because on Tuesday it was like a Sunday service in the evening. So I challenge you let us all not only come when there is a guest. Let us, all, let us also come when the resident pastor is preaching. Because there were, there were over 150 people here on Tuesday. And let me say this. If you have a problem now, are you going to go for the visitor to help you? Let me, it, it, let, let's be candid. I am the one who buries your relatives. I am the one who dedicates your children. 
I am the one you are chasing me every Tuesday and every Thursday. You want an appointment. Okay, we are online. Let's be upstanding. Hallelujah. Now, I want you just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, from today, begin to break forth in every area of your life. Let there be transformation that no devil can erase in Jesus' name. Amen. So now look at your neighbor. Let us share the words of the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now. Amen. You are blessed. You are highly favored. If you are not with us in the second service, God give you a blessed week. Come back on Sunday with testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen.